Hello, everybody. Welcome to the final presentation of our first day at TWIST 2021. Thank you all for joining us. It's good to see so many people from all over the world. I think we're up, I said in the last presentation, I think about 17 different countries um, have joined us today. So it's pretty exciting for us. We're all glad to see you. Um, today's presentation is going to be given by Dr. Ming Che Lin. Um, he received his PhD in electrophysics in 2002. He's currently a professor with the Department of Electrical and Biomedical Engineering at Hanyang University in Seoul, South Korea, where he's involved in particle and cell simulations of plasmas, microwave tubes, electron emissions, and terahertz wave sources, and first principles computations of surface physics and heavy ion therapy. He's also the founder of the Multidisciplinary Computational Laboratory at Hanyang University, where he is focusing on combining computational electromagnetics and quantum mechanics for studying complex systems and biomedical applications and providing professional training and consulting services based on over 20 years of academic and industrial experiences in related fields. Um, so welcome, Ming Che. I am so excited that you're going to be speaking. Uh, thank you very much for introduction, Colin. Uh, today, uh, I'm great to have this opportunity to uh, talk about our recent uh, uh, simulation and uh, development. Okay, and uh, actually this uh, topic is uh, uh, mainly performed by my students, uh, Lindy. Uh, she was, she graduated already and uh, Kavya took uh, the duty for the following 3D design. And the professor, she at the National Taipei University of Technology uh, is uh, one of my international collaborator who provide the uh, uh, console multi-physics simulation support uh, to this topic. And uh, myself, uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, present some our recent uh, results and uh, some publications. First of all, I would like to acknowledge some uh, institute, uh, like uh, uh, actually the years of work uh, were supported by many uh, agencies, like uh, uh, Hanyang University and the National Research Foundation of Korea. And uh, especially this topic is uh, uh, very interesting to MassTech uh, uh, cooperation in Taiwan. And uh, I also received some support from Alexander Fongbo Foundation from Germany. And this is the contents of my talk today. Uh, first of all, I will introduce some background and uh, our motivations. And then I will talk about the research methods we employed and uh, uh, the simulation model and the designs. And I will give you some, uh, 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 some summary of uh, simulation result and uh, we'll discuss about the, the uh, good uh, design we found. And then I will summarize my talk and uh, introduce some future work. So as we know, uh, Megatron has a long history. Uh, I think this is the first one developed by Hua around 1921. So it is stored uh, in museum. And uh, this is a, like a very preliminary design, but uh, it's a, it consists of main concept of Megatron. And there is a diode, diode configuration. And uh, we know that uh, the cavity megatron is a high power uh, vacuum tube. And uh, I, I don't know if all, all you guys are familiar with the megatron. So I think without megatron, we won't be here today. So uh, as you can see, megatron is a vacuum device. So it should be operated in vacuum. And uh, here in the middle is the cathode and the outside is called the uh, resonant cavity. And uh, we rely on this uh, high voltage applied between cathode and anode to uh, extract the electron from the cathode. And uh, we apply uh, magnifier in extra direction. We can get uh, this uh, electron traveling around this intersection space between cathode and anode. And uh, this uh, outside coupled cavity can interact with uh, these electron beams, and uh, we can get the uh, uh, resonance and uh, the, we can get the uh, eye for output and uh, we design a coupler uh, to carry out uh, the eye for energy for uh, utilization. 
And then here shows you some uh, uh, picture of mechanical. So mechanical today is widely used uh, mainly in microwave oven. So we have a counter mechanical like this. Actually, many years ago, uh, with David Smith at TechX. So we really cut of mechanical. It does look like this. So as you can see, uh, this is a conventional mechanical. And uh, if you uh, talk about uh, your microwave oven, you can find this guy and uh, with uh, power supply uh, outlet there. And uh, here you can see this is trapper and the vents. Okay. And uh, you can uh, get the more uh, understanding of mechanical on Wikipedia. And uh, we is well known that uh, cavity megatron was widely used uh, uh, during World War II. So as I mentioned, uh, without megatron, we won't be here because uh, uh, this uh, airborne radar was uh, available during World War II. So uh, we can uh, win, we can won the war uh, finally. So without this uh, airborne radar, it's impossible to defeat uh, Japan or Germany. Okay, and uh, today, microchons are widely used in radar system or heating, lighting, and uh, especially uh, industry heating today. And uh, many uh, weapons also rely uh, uh, a megatron, like a guided missile, for example. So as you can see here, uh, this is, this cavity can be with a very complicated geometry. And the, the difficulty in getting this design is to understand the interactions. So for decades, we already uh, spent a lot of time in optimizing this uh, mechanism. So conventional mechanism can reach like 70-80% uh, without uh, too much problems. Okay, and as you can see here, this is a caso, is the main, is a key component for mechanical. Uh, this caso can produce electrons. So without electrons, uh, we won't get any power. So normally electron could be dead due to this poisoning of uh, the caso. And as you can see here, we have uh, antenna to couple the uh, uh, energy out. And the this coupling is also important design. And the outside, you see this ring mechanism. This provides the action magnetic field. So sometimes we call this is a closed field, closed field type uh, vacuum tube. It's uh, different from linear type, such as Klystron or TWTs. And uh, in recent decades, uh, uh, we switch gear to high power devices. So this is uh, an ASIC magnetron proposed by uh, MIT, researchers at MIT. Uh, it's well known to be used in uh, high power microwave uh, applications. So as you can see, this is, has a six band and uh, especially the cathode is replaced with a code type. So previously here, normally we use a, a semionic cathode that means we heat uh, the cathode and uh, to up uh, like a 1,000 degrees uh, Celsius or Kelvin and uh, then release the electrons uh, uh, thermally. But uh, this, in this case, uh, we, we release the electrons by apply high electric field. Okay, so this uh, design is, uh, has a good advantage because uh, like uh, we can have uh, faster warm up. We don't have. We don't need a uh, warm up the cathode. We have faster turn on features. However, you can see this kind of mechatron can reach about thirty percent, or like a thirty six percent efficiency. Uh, I think for some reason, uh, for years we cannot uh, reach higher uh, efficiency. And uh, this uh, uh, MIT actually proposes several configuration. Then I think the most well known is the A6. And uh, this uh, shows you two curves. One is full cut off and the other one is hard tree. So it's very important to operate a mechatron between this region. And actually it's better to find operating points uh, along this hard tree line. 
So as you can see, vertical axis is voltage and the horizontal axis is magnetic field. So we have to find good find a good operating point. And uh, actually this map is more complicated than this one. It's a simplified one. We only see, uh, I think this is two pi model here. And uh, there are new development, there were new development proposed by Professor Shami Luguru uh, from New Mexico, University of New Mexico. Uh, he proposed a, a new type of uh, magnetron employing a transparent cathode. And uh, this can give you even faster, uh, res, 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 faster turn on time and uh, maybe with higher efficiency by employing a diffraction output. Okay, so uh, they argue the, the efficiency can increase can be is increased up to seventy percent. And the, our motivation actually is uh, for industry applications. This is an M MP uh, CVD system. It uh, stands for uh, microwave plasma enhanced uh, chemical vapor deposition. So uh, the main goal is to develop a diamond, uh, and not only diamond film, but uh, maybe diamond disc for uh, fusion gyrotrons in the future. So as you can see <clears throat> here, we have a microwave source at uh, 2.45 gigahertz. And this is uh, an industrial type of mechanism. So it should be very reliable and uh, very uh, energy efficiency and uh, low cost, for example. And uh, we launch a microwave through WebGuide and then maybe we add a circulator in between, prevent the uh, 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 damage the micro, uh, microwave source. And then here we have plasma generated and uh, this to uh, develop a diamond or any novel materials like a graphene. And uh, this is shows you an in industrial mechanism developed by Mugger. This uh, magnetron actually is widely used. Uh, is it consists of three kilowatt at a uh, seventy percent efficiency, at uh, two point four five gigahertz, and then we know a uh, good magnetron should have these features like a uh, high efficiency, long operating life, small magnetic field uh, leakage, and a uh, high frequency stability, uh, low voltage, low inner voltage, and the uh, compact and the uh, lightweight. Okay, and the, uh, okay, I will skip this. So as you can see, uh, we we have two type of magnetron today. I mean, for conventional magnetron. Uh, for for conventional magnetron, we uh, utilize trapper because uh, the reason for using trapper is uh, this uh, magnetron, as you can see, has many couple cavities. So this can have different, uh, resonance modes. So there is more competition in this megatron. So in order to uh, separate the mode, we have to use this trapper. But uh, this uh, trapper will break the symmetry of the megatron. So in order to study this, you have to pursue a 3D modeling and it's very time consuming, basically. And uh, on the right hand side, this is a rising sun megatron. And, uh, it's also, there's also some applications, but uh, compared to conventional megatron, this is not uh, widely used. However, it, uh, it does has, have a lot of good features. So in this uh, work, uh, we propose to use uh, rising some megatron uh, to simplify the design and uh, get a reliable uh, industrial type of megatrons. And in addition, we propose to use the free emission cathode. Okay. Actually, we uh, started this uh, research in collaboration with uh, Professor Jim Browning at, uh, at the Boise University, Idaho. And uh, he came out with uh, some uh, idea with uh, free emission arrays. So we think uh, uh, free emission cathode can uh, change the story of megatrons. In comparison, uh, some ionic cases, so mostly they have some poison material. For example, they have uh, thorium mixed uh, materials, barium or other 
materials, that those oxides may be poisoned if it's released. In comparison, we uh, for a filmation castle, we can uh, employ like a graphene or diamond thin film or uh, unstructured the crystal diamond, for example. And uh, here, our goal is to develop a, a megatron. Uh, the power is greater than three kilowatt, and uh, the frequency is central at uh, 2.45 gigahertz. And uh, we hope to reach a, a free an efficiency up to 80%. Actually, this spec was defined by a uh, uh, Mestec uh, corporation in Taiwan. They, they are pursuing to uh, have their own magnetron in the near future. And for the research method, uh, basically because we have uh, electrons involved uh, in this uh, EM uh, structure, so basically we rely on uh, peak simulations. So the method that we employ is well known. It's called finite difference time domain particle in cell simulation. So there's a good review uh, uh, published by uh, Professor John Barbanko. You can uh, refer this reference. So if you want to perform this uh, simulation, it, uh, it's better to understand this loop. This is a peak simulation, fundamental peak simulation. So basically we are solving uh, uh, tiers. Mass wave equation. So we solve uh, mass wave equations uh, with uh, source term. So we have we have to check uh, all the particles. So basically, uh, these particles live in a continuous space. So we have a Lagrange Lagrangian picture, and uh, for fear we solve in grid space. So we have Orion picture, and uh, we need a uh, interpolation. For example, after solving uh, this. Uh, particle, we got the location and the velocity, we have to interpolate this to greatest position to solve, in order to solve electric field, many field. And uh, we have to get another interpolation. If they're solving this field, we need to uh, get a new field, Lorentz force to push these particles. And uh, they, you need uh, some uh, boundary treatment, for example, to bring in particles into the system or uh, get uh, some particle out of the system due to absorption on the surface. So our goal is uh, to utilize the VSIM because the VSIM has uh, this framework uh, developed. Uh, and uh, as we know, VSIM has a second order accuracy on this complicated geometry, for example, and uh, it uh, employs Demetra Cassell uh, boundary algorithms. And uh, it has been tested, it uh, can give uh, uh, 99% accuracy with a uh, lower mesh. Okay, and uh, this is rising sound megatron employing a free emission castle were designed uh, and developed uh, using this uh, accurate uh, algorithm. And uh, actually, this has a lot of advantages compared to conventional uh, strip the megatron. Uh, for example, the one Mo the most important thing of this work is uh, we can use 2D simulation to optimize the configuration and the operating points. This cannot be done with a conventional strip of magnetron because of the broken symmetry. And then this is the conformal or finite difference time domain algorithm employed in VSIM is called Demetra Cassell. Okay, you can refer to this reference to understand more detail about this. So outside, this is uh, considered metal inside vacuum, and uh, there's a treatment, special treatment around around these boundaries. So around these boundaries, is uh, VSIM uh, uh, does uh, integration around these uh, uh, fractional cells instead of stair step uh, boundary. So we call is conformal. So the updated equations, uh, we modify, for example, Faraday laws. So this area is the, and there is a pace length where the, the geometry parameters from the castle. So we replace this with uh, conventional uh, Faraday updater, and uh, this is Ampere updater. Then uh, we pay, we do pay some penalty, but uh, we can uh, get a more higher accuracy. 
Okay, as you, and uh, you may know that uh, uh, Vsim actually uh, today is modularized. Uh, so we have a module called Vsim MD. So uh, it's, it uh, can be used for uh, different kind of electromagnetic or and the plasma system modeling. So you can find different uh, examples there. And uh, so the work today, we also utilize one of the example to uh, fit our design. And uh, in order to uh, work on this megatron, actually more than 10 years ago, we already developed uh, some uh, megatron model and for a benchmark. So at the time I was with Tekes uh, as a research scientist. So this could be my uh, first work on megatron using uh, Vsim. So at the time I developed this A6 megatron and the design, specially design uh, uh, its external circuit with a feedback mechanism. Okay, so this was still used. This is still used today. And as you can see uh, here, we, we can get a, a pi model and two pi model. And then you can clearly see this bunch, bunch the electron beam. And uh, in that paper, uh, we benchmark this against the conventional FTDD. That means uh, those employee conventionally with stair step boundaries. And uh, we found that uh, we can reach about 99.4% accuracy with just 100 by 100 meshes, meshes, meshes. So this is a very good one because we can reduce the computation time a lot. And he's here shows you the A6 uh, parameter, uh, A6 results for benchmark. So here shows you there are two branches here from, from first branch up to pi mode is 2.35 uh, 2 up to uh, second branch. So two pi mode is 2.4.6. And uh, we did a detailed benchmark. So it, uh, in, it uh, ensure we can get a, a high accuracy with this type of simulations. Okay, so here, basically we employ a resolution of 102 by 102, and uh, we have confidence that uh, the accuracy can be 99% uh, or better. And uh, so here, give you some flavor of uh, VC modeling. So today is very easy. So here shows you this 2D mechanism. So basically we use uh, this is simulation that's enough for our study here. And if you pursue 3D, you can go to this example like a A6 magnetron one or two. The one, the first one is a cold test. The second one is a, a hard test simulation. But since those are 3D modeling and, and it uh, could be very time consuming. So uh, in, this, in this work, uh, we perform only 2D and uh, so we can optimize the geometry before we pursue the uh, 3D modeling. Okay, so this is shows you the uh, working flow today in VSIM. So everything you can just click uh, and uh, going through this process, you can build uh, your own model. So here I show you geometry. So in this case, this is, we, we, we can create a, uh, this is a Megatron model from other CAD uh, tools like a SolidWorks, a ProE or other uh, simulation tool. For example, in this case, we also use a console to develop a geometry model by the students. Okay, and the, actually you can also use CSG, uh, create construct a model inside VSIM and we also uh, work on that too. And uh, so if you want to uh, study this megatron, you have to develop uh, some, you have to create uh, some history for diagnosing the system. Okay, so here uh, we, for example, we want to monitor the number of micro particles in the system to ensure the sample particles are in enough and uh, we want to develop a monitor for cavity, uh, case and voltage, okay? And uh, we want to know how much energy is deposited on uh, anode, for example, 
uh, this is uh, anode electron heat water, for example. And we also have a cathode return current that can dissipate the energy on the cathode. Okay, and uh, we try to understand uh, the difference between conventional megatron and the, this uh, rising sun megatron. So we try to under, understand the dispersion, dispersion curve of this megatron. So originally we know that the conventional megatron employs a uh, side cavity with the same uh, size. For example, this is uh, case A. So, and by reducing this radius, we can understand how dispersion is changed. So here shows you the dispersion curve. So this green line gives us the dispersion of conventional mechanism. And this straight dash line gives us the operating curves. And as you can see, if we move to uh, case B, and uh, we reduce a little bit of the radius of one set of smaller cavities and the, it, uh, the dispersion will be changed. As you can see, this dispersion uh, with rising sun, uh, the blue one is the final uh, design of our rising sun. As you can see, it can provide a good uh, motor separation. So as you can see, if you apply this green one, uh, it's difficult to separate uh, uh, the neighbor, neighboring mode. But uh, you see uh, the blue line, this is like an aim shape. So we operate, uh, if we operate at the pi mode here, then the next uh, neighboring mode is uh, far, far away. But I think we do have a good feature for rising sun uh, cavity. And uh, in this simulation, as I said, uh, it's, it uh, retains the 2D symmetry, so we can apply 2D simulation. But uh, we need uh, to have an outlet for microwave uh, power. So we have to uh, add a, a loading. So we use this uh, sorbian material here, as shown here in gray. Uh, this is considered as a loader cavity. So by playing with a sorbian parameter, you can change, uh, for example, Q load. So we can uh, load the cavity differently to is it, is it, 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 it mimic like a, a output for 3D mechanisms. So without this, we cannot uh, succeed uh, this modeling. And uh, here shows you the optimized parameters of our configuration design. And uh, we also use uh, console to for the code test to ensure the efficiency and the Q value are correct for our design. So it's compared with VSIM simulation. So in VSIM, you can also perform a test a simulation, code test simulation. And you can get the, uh, all the resonance uh, with Q values. And uh, we did a comparison to ensure the, the modes are correct and accurate. In order to optimize the geometry, we also consider all the parameters. So we sweep uh, different parameters like a uh, cavity radius, anode radius, castle radius, and uh, also angles. So by, by varying this parameter setting, we can try to understand how we uh, modify the cavities to ensure we steer at the right resonance at 2.45 gigahertz. And then this diagram shows you the BV map. Okay, this is uh, important. So as you can see the blue one, these are blue curves. These are uh, Hachi, Hachi lines from conventional mechanism. And the red one are those for rising some mechanism. And uh, this is, uh, red solid circle is represent uh, high mode we want to operate it. And uh, you can see the next mode is separated far away. Okay. 
And in addition to that, uh, we try to design uh, the megatron, which can be operated at the same uh, voltage as conventional one. So if you uh, draw a line across this operating point, uh, you can see another good feature is the, mechan the magnetic field can be reduced almost half. Okay, and actually this is the main achievement of the students. So she spent a lot of time to carry out these simulations. As you can see, there are a lot of data points here. And uh, these data points, uh, we, we needed to uh, perform a very long run. And uh, since it's a 2D, this can be achieved uh, without too much difficulty. Okay, so as you can see along, we try to find out a good operating point uh, near, uh, actually near five kilovolt, okay? So this is uh, the voltage conventional mechanisms operated. Why we would like to lack? Like, we would like to have that because we don't have to change power supply for uh, existing design. We can just uh, replace the existing mechanism with this new design. Okay, but we have we might have to uh, change the magnetic field. Okay, so in this case, you can see the optimized. Uh, efficiency can reach about 80%. Okay, so if you don't have a good operating point, uh, the efficiency will be much lower. Okay, and uh, this shows you the final optimization of our parameters. So could give you a uh, voltage and the uh, many fear and the uh, current injected. And uh, here, the most, uh, important part is this is simulation runtime. So we run the system up to 2000 uh, nanosecond. This is difficult to be done if you have a 3D model. So it's very good uh, to use 2D simulation to optimize the geometry. So he, here shows you some uh, uh, analysis we used uh, in VSIM. So for example, we uh, monitor uh, electric, uh, B field, electric field in the system. So we can perform FT to understand the resonance there. So as you can see, this is pi mode and uh, it's very pure. And uh, the only competition mode is this one. Yeah, this is like, a, because we have uh, 10 vents so it's like a uh, two pi over five modes, for example. But it's further away. So as you can see, there's at least a 20 dB difference. So this is uh, it's very pure without pure resonance, without strapping. So we don't have to employ any strapping to break the symmetry. And uh, for this rising time, we perform a time frequency analysis, as you can see, at the beginning, this is lower the more tend to oscillate, but uh, around 40 nanosecond, it's gone. So it's dominated by this uh, pi mode resonance and uh, very pure. And then he, here shows you this uh, uh, time frame screenshot, time frame screenshots of this uh, operating uh, design. So as you can see, this is, uh, we have five spots for this uh, space charge. And uh, from 40 nanoseconds, you can see clearly five spot and uh, it's getting stable and most and more stable when time goes by. And then you can see clear fear pattern. This is a BZ magnetic fear. So you can see pi mode. The next uh, uh, neighboring cavity has a pi uh, phase shifter. So blue can be uh, a negative phase and the red one shows you a uh, positive phase. And then here shows you the annual voltage we applied in the system. So this is from diagnostics. And then here we uh, observe uh, this annual current 
And uh, this is actually with some uh, post processing. And then nowadays in VSIM, you can uh, get this uh, average data uh, from analyze table. So you can just click and select the quantity, physical quantity you want to average. Uh, so by this post processing, we can determine the power and the efficiency of the design. So basically we can also monitor output power. So before uh, this load the material, we set a point vector diagnostic. This is also uh, monitored. But here, this upper power actually we up, 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 we acquire this uh, upper power by using energy conservation. Okay, so we uh, measure the anode current and we measure the energy deposit on anode and the cathode, and uh, we can uh, calculate the, the RF upper power uh, energy. Then we know input power. We can determine the efficiency. And uh, we also test, uh, uh, we also uh, try to uh, study if this uh, emission current will affect the efficiency and also the load the Q. So as you can see, uh, load the Q can change efficiency dramatically. So we have to choose uh, load the Q carefully in this design. And uh, for linear, uh, for current density, it, uh, around this region, it doesn't vary too much. So we can get uh, around efficiency of 80%. Okay, and uh, this is a 2D simulation, but uh, of course in real world, uh, we would like to have a 3D design. So because this has a, a symmetry, so we can just uh, estimate uh, the 3D output. So we, by, uh, just uh, because right now this design is with current density about 0.6 ampere per square centimeter. This is achievable with the emission array or, or core case of today. And uh, we, I think we get the, uh, we use uh, three centimeter of height. We can reach three kilowatt. Okay, so this is very, feasible design for industry applications, we believe. And the result is published in JVSTP last year. So if you want to know more detail, please refer to this paper. And the finally summary, uh, the design and simulation of fear emission based uh, rising sun mechanism has been conducted using the 2D CFDT peak simulations as implemented in VSIM. And uh, for industry application, this rising sun uh, mechanism cavity has been optimized to 2.45 gigahertz. And uh, we optimize the configuration, geometric configuration, and also cavity loading. And the density is about 0.6, which is achievable in experiments today without too difficulty. And uh, from the test, hard test the simulation result, uh, we achieve uh, efficiency about 80%. So basically it uh, reaches our goal for industry applications. And uh, with uh, achievable current density of free emission array, or we may also pursue uh, UNCD, that's a, a kind of diamond film for this rising sun mechanism. Then I think uh, after we make sure the 3D simulation, we this can be uh, a, top, a prototype can be uh, manufactured. So here it shows you some future work. So uh, students were creating geometry. So in this case, uh, we use different software to create geometry and import to VSIM. As you can see, it's working well. And uh, you can also use uh, CSG uh, to create uh, this model. So like this is very simple. For example, you can crea create a wedge first uh, and uh, copy this wedge to be five vents and uh, do the same thing for smaller cavity, smaller cavities. Then you can unite uh, all of this and uh, with uh, a cylinder, then you can get uh, this uh, 
uh, rising sun. So inside VSIM, you can uh, use this CSG and the Boolean uh, functions you can create. Uh, and then we can add a, a big cylinder as a metal, and uh, you can subtract uh, this geometry, you can get uh, this cavity and non cavity. And uh, inside another castle, as uh, another cylinder rod as a cathode, and uh, you can get a 3D. So this work is ongoing. We we would like to, uh, after optimizing the 2D geometry, we'd like to uh, test the 3D model, but we need to uh, uh, design output as well, a more realistic output uh, antenna for applications. And uh, another challenging part is the fear mission. So fear mission usually is not so stable if we apply high energy fear. So, Several years ago, when I was at the tech case, I also helped uh, develop some fear machine algorithm. So uh, we are going to con continue this uh, study to get a more re reliable fear machine from this uh, cathode, then we can see uh, how fear machine can affect uh, these operations. And then here shows you some references uh, in this work. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so if anyone has any questions, thank you so much, Ming Che, for presenting with us. It's good to see, um, you know, some of the results and everything that you've presented here. If anyone has any questions, they can type them into the Q and A box on the bottom. Um, if you would prefer to ask. Your questions, I can give, you can raise your hand and I can allow you to talk um, if that would be easier. And um, we have Ming Che for just a little while where he can um, answer any questions. I should also, um, I want to mention that we do offer free trial evaluations of all of our software products, vSIM, USIM, and RSIM. So if you have not tried vSIM before and you would like to, um, all you have to do is go to the TechX website at txcorp.com, so txcorp.com, and you can request an evaluation free for 30 days. And that um, evaluation software will have all four packages. So it comes with all of the capabilities and that's a way for you to try it out and see um, if this is something that would work for your problem. So uh, let me see here if I can. It uh, looks like John has the question. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> that was a very nice talk. Thank you so much. Okay, um, thank you. <clears throat> so, you know, some of the recent work on emission uh, by Kevin Jensen has talked about how you can sort of transition between, um, you know, child Langmuir emission and Richardson Dashman emission, you know, filament kind of emission. And I'm wondering, have people done any studies on how having emission vary as a function of temperature and well, would affect your results? Oh, that's a very good question. Thank you, John. So actually, when I was at the case, I went through those parts. So actually, that, that feature has been developed in VSIM, and I carefully benchmark the algorithm. So it's called a general fee emission model in VSIM. And uh, actually, I found some uh, uh, numerical instabilities. There, there are two singularities in the, in the algorithm developed by Kevin Jensen. And uh, I also discussed with this with Kevin and, uh, and uh, I also show a benchmark of VSIM against this uh, theory. So I think I presented a letter several years ago when I was at, tech at, at some major conferences. And uh, we plan to use the letter algorithm, of course. So I'm testing some formation because uh, Especially in particle insert simulation, this uh, fear emission, sometimes we may have a uh, high, very high electric fear at the edges. So this edge can cause uh, some singularity and this can fail the fear emission algorithm. So we have to be careful about this. This could cause numerical artifacts in some way. 
Very nice. Thank you. So do you have, just to follow up one little question, do you have some sort of guidelines for people? Uh, you know, you mentioned you have to be careful. Do you have some sort of guidelines for, for, for uh, yes. where are uh, the parameter yes. regimes where they should be careful? Yes. Yes. Uh, for example, uh, actually, uh, in in fee emission model developed in VSIM, I think uh, that's the best uh, emission algorithm available in PICO uh, at this moment. Because I also implement a uh, four bus model. Uh, four, 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 four bus model, uh, four bus is a professor in UK. In recent years, he developed uh, an improved uh, fee emission model. And uh, why, why, why I was at the case, I implemented that uh, with John Lovrichi in VSIM. So in VSIM, you should be careful setting these uh, fee emission parameters. So uh, for fee emission, conventionally, we use uh, the parameters developed by uh, Spinter. Yes, at the Stanford Research Institute, SI. Okay, so, uh, there's a, I think there's a menu in uh, VSIM. Uh, some people interested can refer to the menu there. It just shows you how to design this uh, shaky no harm parameters. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I'm aware of spin. Thank you very much and thank you thank for you. a very nice talk. Okay. Yes. Looks like we have, um, I have another question here. How long is was the simulation run of the rising sun magnetron model? Okay, uh, you, may, you may see that uh, we have uh, different kinds of simulation. So if you want to get a quick run, for example, 200 nanoseconds, uh, you can get a, it, uh, get a result within like uh, 10 minutes. Uh, but uh, I mean, you need to employ parallel computation. So maximally we can use uh, sitting core, so you can get a result about 10 minutes, but mm -hmm. for longer run, uh, usually for optimization, because uh, it's, it takes a long time, because uh, we have to uh, arrange a lot of parameters. So basically uh, we use one core for each parameter, then up to 2000, it, it takes uh, 12 hours for each data. And uh, as you know, student can mess up this. So actually, uh, you have uh, you have to be careful about the settings. Student ever spend three months and uh, give me uh, like a, a lot of garbage data because they mess about mess around mess up around the mesh setting. So if you don't uh, you are not care, careful about the setting, any error could fail the data. So basically, if you for optimization, we use one core, like a previous work. I also concerned about optimization using AI. Uh, I, th I think actually one core per task is good for optimizing the geometry or operation. Have you, um, did you ever compare vSIM simulation results with other software? Uh, yes, a long time ago, uh, actually I was a magic user before, but I didn't use magic for many years. So at the beginning, I don't, when I first joined TechS more than 10 years ago, I don't, because before I work in on some, before I work on some research topic, I will carefully uh, study the tool. So that time I tried to study VSIM. Yeah, and uh, actually that time, uh, VSIM is not so easy to use like today. And uh, I have a harder time in learning VSIM compared to Magic. But it turns out uh, for years, uh, we can get a better simulation from VSIM compared to Magic. So I have a benchmark uh, actually VSIM and the Magic uh, on async mechanism simulation. So if you use Magic, uh, you may see some errors there because of this stair step. Uh, uh, boundary, and uh, we do get the second order accuracy from this simulation, and uh, with uh, with a smaller simulation time. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, and uh, one more question I have is: How do you calculate the efficiency and the output power? 
Okay, so as I mentioned, the uh, uh, okay, let's let's go to the cavity. So here we have a load cavity. So there are two ways. Uh, there are two ways to calculate uh, this efficiency or output power. So we set a we specially set a, a pointing vector here, diagnostic here to measure the power the power going through this loaded cavity. So uh, if you don't have model computation, this number will be consistent with the energy conservation method that we apply here. So we double check the output power without uh, losing this uh, validity. So uh, we the way we calculate uh, the efficiency is like this. So we measure uh, emitted the current from cathode and the deposit the current on both the anode and the cathode. Okay, so we know how much current, anode current is deposit is moving from cathode to anode. So this is consists of inter input power. We know P equal to IV is the input power. And uh, we know energy conservation. So we also carefully check uh, power conservation in the simulation. So by subtracting uh, anode heat and the cathode heat, we can determine the RF power generated. And uh, since there is no competing mode in this case, because uh, the next uh, neighboring mode is very weak. So we assume all the energy is belong uh, to the pi mode. So we double check this with uh, po uh, pointing um, vector measurement. So that's consistent. So we have confi confidence that uh, the, the design can reach 80% of efficiency. Great. Let's see, um, looks like we have, oh, another question. I'm gonna see. Alex, if you wanna unmute, you can ask your question. There you go. I Let's think see. I was still muted. Um. <laughs> there you go, We can hear you now. <laughs> I, I, I recognize your voice. <laughs> it is, hi. hi, Ming, yeah, it's, I, I wanted to, to talk to you, so I'm talking to you. But uh, and that was that was great to hear your voice and 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 watch this this really great presentation. So thanks for that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have a really great question to ask, but um, I was curious. In, I don't know if you mentioned this. Uh, do you have future plans for using vSim to do to simulate other? other things besides um besides the magnetron like uh plasmas and um, other perhaps other electron devices or okay that's a good question actually this is a very good question uh oh good i think yeah. we, we we met uh 20 years ago at the slag right yeah so uh, actually there are a lot of research topics ongoing even uh, several years ago, when I was at the TechX, uh, actually we ever study uh, Christchurch, Magnetron, TWT, and then the last work uh, uh, at the TechX is Fusion Generation. Mm -hmm. So I think VSIM today is the best simulation tool for microwave devices. And uh, since uh, I think no other tools can simulate a large scale vacuum electronic devices like VSIM. And uh, you, yeah. you see uh, the preparation is uh, scaled well in for VSIM. And uh, uh, for example, uh, for gyrotron, fusion gyrotron, uh, we model the, uh, it uh, takes uh, like uh, one day, we can finish the hard test the model in fusion gyrotron. It's a very, very high order mode. And uh, I think this is still the world record today. Uh, other software cannot reach it. Wow. And uh, yeah. I I have some ongoing research uh, on gyrotron. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is actually this is my continuing uh, work at uh, Hanyang University, and uh, in collaboration with KIT in Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So uh, I think later on, because at the time case, I didn't publish it too many papers uh, on general chance. So later on, I may publish more. So people will see these good features. Uh, because I, I can say that uh, if you are interested in Megatron, VSIM right now is the best tool for that purpose. Because I also tried the CST before. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my research work uh, at uh, Germany, I also benchmark uh, our simulation in VSIM with uh, CSD simulation. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, VSIM can catch uh, more detailed physics compared to other software. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have uh, at Raytheon, we have CST. Um... Uh, and we and we have mostly used ice pick for the really rigorous um, simulations mm -hmm. of vacuum devices, but we're trying to see if CST can uh, can also do some of what ice pick does. I'm I'm not very hopeful, and uh, so I'm very interested in getting VSIM here at Raytheon, but um, it's a process <laughs> when you're when you're in a big corporation like this. So. Yes, because I do have some collaborators using uh, CST. Uh, so I can give you many fair story. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, I yeah think. because like a uh, Megatron uh, simulation might be okay for simple case. Mm. And uh, for Gyrotron, uh, simple configuration, like a low order mode is okay. Mm. But the uh, higher the mode, uh, like uh, my collaborator in Korea, uh, they cannot get good results from CST. Mm. And uh, mm. my collaborator in Taiwan, they also gave up. Uh, they switched to VSIM already. Yeah. 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 I've heard some similar horror stories. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I, I remember we have a collaboration work on Windows, if you recall. Oh, so the, uh, the, RF, the vacuum Windows? window, yeah. yeah. W pane window, you remember? Yeah. yeah we right. published a paper there, and uh, actually we have a continuing work. Uh, we we are trying to study uh, time domain response of the transmission. So we we try to study first mode effect yeah. on this uh, directory windows. First mode. Yeah. yeah. So actually, originally I planned to attend uh, PPC in Denver in person. But uh, oh. right now, it's going to virtual. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. let me know when you're stateside. <laughs> OK. Be yeah. Great to meet. Yeah. yeah. If you have any question, please contact me. I am available mostly. Yeah. yeah. I just need your email or something. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Great. Thanks. Thank you. All right. I think that may be a great place to end it on such a high note. Thank, thank you for your uh, words, Alex, as well. Ming Che, what a great presentation. Um, it is always good <laughs> to see you. And actually, I haven't actually seen you present before. So very nice. Um, one last thing, if you want to try out our products, I'm going to say one more time, go to txcorp.com and you can get a free 30-day evaluation of anything you've seen here. We will be back tomorrow morning at 8.30. Um, tomorrow, we are starting out with a presentation by Dr. Jared Letty on our fluid model um, uh, in VSIM. Um, sorry, let me say it the correct way in uh, modeling neutral and charged fluids in VSIM. Thanks so much, everyone. We will see you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Colleen, for mm -hmm. organizing this. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, me. Okay. Bye. Thank you.